they have given us all of the tools that we need to heal. They are all here present on this earth, on this planet. And it is up to us to utilize those tools and to open our mind and start moving away from this synthetic medical industrial complex where some doctors are actually, and, and scientists, they're playing God and they're trying to recreate what is already here and put a patent on it and make money off of it. And as we all know, the current healthcare system is nothing more than a sick care system and they keep us sick. Well, our next speaker here has gone through an experience of being told he's incurable, unable to walk, unable to take care of himself, hospitalized for weeks, and doctor said there's nothing that can be done. I had a similar experience. I got bit by a brown recluse. I ended up unable to take care of myself. My sweet children were bringing me cups of water because I couldn't function. And the modern medical industrial complex said, oh, we don't know how to deal with infectious disease. Well, Dr. Buckley, who's here, you can see his picture right there, he helped me to learn how to detox my body and take control of what was happening. Helped me to empower myself so that I no longer had to go to you know, trained quote unquote doctors. Now I still go to Dr. Buckley for guidance, but like I'm not going into the hospital and looking up to somebody to save me. I'm now looking within. And I have discovered that I have the power to heal myself. And this is something that our next speaker has discovered as well. So if you could please, let's give a warm welcome to Clive. Well, thank you all so very much for coming. Um, what I'm going to talk about tonight, uh, uh, this morning, is health anarchy. And the idea is that we need to take control of our health. You know, what, what, would, <coughs> what would happen if the grid went down? Suddenly there's no electricity, or something happened, or they released the Ebola virus again for real this time. What are we going to do? I mean, I'm a very optimistic person, but at the same time, preparedness is important. I mean, clearly, most of you in this room are probably financially prepared. You've looked at what to do in the event of a financial breakdown and how you're going to cope. But what if you're ill and for some reason you can't get to a doctor? You probably wouldn't want to go to one in the first place because they don't know about health. But let's say that uh, you know, you're ill, your family are ill, your neighbors are ill, your community is ill. What are you going to do? So I want to run through in this half hour or so what the real keys are to being healthy. Now. When I was ill, I got to the stage, I'd taken an antibiotic, one antibiotic knocked sideways. I got so arthritic I couldn't, couldn't get dressed. And what it was, that was that I had calcifications building up. You know, arthritis basically is calcium deposits. And what I found is that by taking magnesium, which is essentially the opposite of calcium, all the calcifications went away. So what other parts of the body get calcified? Well, the pineal gland. The pineal gland, as I think many of you know, is the gland of connection. If you, if you want your psychic abilities to be working properly, you want your intuition to be working properly, you need a clean pineal gland. And magnesium is probably the ideal material to uh, cleanse your pineal gland and get rid of arthritis. But let me run through very quickly the magnesium deficiency symptoms and see if you've got any of them. You only need one, you don't need the whole, whole lot. So magnesium deficiency symptoms include constipation, they include muscle cramps, menstrual cramps, spasms, twitches, hiccups, arthritis, strokes, heart attacks, atrial fibrillation, you know, the, the heart beating unevenly, um, having problems digesting food because magnesium controls all the enzymes in the body. Magnesium is the num number one mineral at the top of the pile. And if you haven't got enough magnesium, your body isn't going to work properly, your mind isn't going to work properly. So over the last couple of years, I've tested well over a thousand people's magnesium levels. How many, what percentage of people do you think are low? Including myself, 100%. Even the ones who were supplementing with magnesium were still low. So how can that be? Well, it's because stress depletes your magnesium levels. Your body responds to stress by burning magnesium. So what if you haven't got any magnesium left to burn? Well, your intelligent body might say, well, rather than die, let's drag some magnesium out of the bones, for instance. Now somebody's maybe got osteoporosis. So how easy, inexpensive is it to use magnesium? Well, you can buy magnesium so cheaply that a few dollars 
and you've got magnesium for a whole year. It costs almost nothing. Let's say that for the people who are having muscle cramps, for instance, they should get incredibly painful cramp, maybe when you wake up in the morning, rub some liquid magnesium on a few cents worth, and the cramps will stop immediately. And you'll find if you use magnesium daily, you'll never get a muscle cramp again. Mm -hmm. You'll never, you know. Let, let me just explain the, the mechanism. Uh, let's say it's about the heart beating. Calcium allows the heart to contract. Magnesium allows it to relax. The same with the bowel movement. Calcium allows contraction. Magnesium allows relaxation. So if you haven't got enough magnesium, you can't relax. Therefore, constipation can happen. Therefore, a heart attack can happen. People die. Uh, after sports events, they go, uh, go on a marathon run, they drop down dead at the end. People die in the desert and we think, oh, they, they died of thirst. No, they didn't. What they died of was sweating out all the magnesium so that their heart couldn't unbeat. And so if everybody's low on magnesium, what would that mean in real terms if, if everybody started supplementing work with magnesium? Well, the, the hospitals would be half empty. Half empty. Certainly arthritis would be a, a thing of the past constipation, all the bowel problems, you know, people get IBS and Crohn's and, uh, sorry? What's a good source of magnesium? Where do you source it from? Okay, well, there are many, many sources, and, and it would be from vegetables. You know, in the old days, nobody would have needed to supplement, really, with magnesium, although people used to use Dead Sea salts. You know, you've heard of people go to the spa, <coughs> and just take the, the doctors say, go and take the waters, so you go and wallow in, in the magnesium-rich water, and sea has a lot of magnesium. And one of the reasons you feel so great when you're in the sea, you're getting a, a bunch of magnesium, so you're feeling more relaxed and happy and so on. So magnesium chloride is probably the cheapest way to get it, and one can have baths in magnesium chloride for so cheap. Dead Sea salts is basically magnesium chloride. You put a couple of pounds of magnesium in your bath, and as hot as you can, and spend 20, 25 minutes, the magnesium will go right in through the skin, and the chances are you'll feel great after a magnesium bath. It, it's incredible, almost everybody does, yes. Is that the same thing as Epsom salts? Epsom salts is magnesium sulfate, and magnesium sulfate is also very interesting, and let me just talk about magnesium sulfate for a minute. Imagine, you, you probably all have a splinter in your finger that you haven't been able to get out, you might be gouging at it, trying to get it out. If you make a paste with it, of, uh, some Epsom salt crystals, some magnesium sulfate crystals, and you put the paste on top of the splinter, wait about 10 minutes, and a little squeeze, chances are it'll pop right out. <laughs> and this is the sort of information that we all actually need to know. How, how can we fix these simple things, which if you don't get a splinter out, you know, you'd have a really nasty infection, it could be awful. One cent's worth of Epsom salts, and you're fine. So what else are Epsom salts used for? Well, there are two types of doctors out there. There's the regular doctor who's interested in treating you with drugs, or surgery, or whatever it might be, and they're really in it for, month, for the money. Then there's the emergency room doctors, and their job is different. Their job is to save your life no matter what. So many, not all, emergency doctors know how to use Epsom salts. Somebody's come into the emergency room and they're having a heart attack. Right? They're going to die. You've got a few seconds, a minute or something, they're going to die. What do they do? They inject you IV with Epsom salts, magnesium sulfate, and within a second, a second and a half, something like that, bam, the heart's beating normally again, and they're not going to die. So should you have some Epsom salts around the house? Well, I think you should, because let's say you weren't in a position to give somebody an IV, well, you could take Epsom salts or magnesium chloride as a liquid and rip their clothes off, rub it in all over, and again, within a few seconds, the chances are there'd be enough magnesium now in the bloodstream that the heart attack would cease and everybody, and the person is gonna live. Yeah. Can you speak briefly on the uh, differences between magnesium chloride and, and magnesium sulfate? And yeah, magnesium sulfate primarily is something that draws out toxins. So people have a bath in a couple of pounds of Epsom salt, magnesium sulfate because <coughs> it draws stuff out. Sulfur, as in the sulfate part, um, is makes things water soluble. So let's say you were poisoned with mercury, for example. Uh, if you decide to have an Epsom salt bath, um, when the, the sulfate, the sulfur goes into the bloodstream and meets a metal that is not normally water soluble, it turns it into mercury sulfate or lead sulfate or copper sulfate, whatever it is. 
So sulfur makes it water soluble so you can pee out the toxic metals. So on the other hand, magnesium chloride is the one you want to get magnesium in. In an Epsom salts bath, you'll also get magnesium in, but not to the extent that you would with magnesium chloride. A lot of people have a bath in both. You know, a pound of one, a pound of the other. Uh, you could put in some unprocessed <coughs> salt, for instance. You know, did you know that in World War II, when the navies of the world ran out of blood plasma for transfusions, they used seawater, doesn't matter what your blood type is, dilute some seawater with, with water, and you can inject it straight in. So. What have we been told about salt all these years? Well, we've been told to avoid it, right? And they've been, they were talking about table salt, the powdery, free-running stuff. If you eat that, you're in danger of heart attacks, strokes. You know, table salt is hugely dangerous. So what about sea salt? Well, if your sea salt is white and fluffy, like it normally is in the stores, well, that's been bleached. It's been processed because if we went out to the sea and we got some of the Pacific Ocean, dried it out in the sun and the wind, what we find is that what we're left with is grey and damp. And there's a code name for this type of salt, it's called Celtic salt. And it tastes fantastic, 20 times nicer than regular sea salt. And it's incredibly cheap, you can buy it on eBay uh, for, for very little money, Celtic salt. And these are the sort of things you need to have in your emergency cupboard at home. You need to be able to be prepared for anything. And let me give you, for instance, the brown recluse spider that Catherine was talking about that bit her. Well, what if? we got bitten by a poisonous spider or a poisonous snake, or we'd actually accidentally taken some poison, something like that, what would you do? Well, in the emergency room of the hospital, they would give you charcoal. They give you activated charcoal. And activated charcoal is about four times more potent than real charcoal, or old-fashioned charcoal. But activated charcoal, you can only safely use once a week. Some people are using activated charcoal more often, which is a bad idea. Old-fashioned charcoal has a has a code name, C60 charcoal, the 60 carbon atoms all joined together in what they call a fullerene. Now, if somebody comes to my house and they've just been out for some rubbish meal and they're in pain with, with stomach pains, I'll give them four or six charcoal tablets, and usually within about 15 minutes, you say, how's your stomach now? They say, oh, I've forgotten, I even had one. So charcoal is a fantastic remedy for poisoning of any kind. But let's say that you, you, you're you worried that the charcoal might be enough. You know, you've been bitten by a recluse spider and, and you, you, you're going to be suffering a lot unless you do something quickly. What would you do? Vitamin C. Vitamin C is the ultimate antihistamine. It's anti-allergenic. It is antiviral, antibacterial, and neutralizes poisons almost better than anything. And when I was young and uh, 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 one of the things I was told was that if somebody's having a bad LSD trip, what do you want to do? You want to give them vitamin C. You could give it in the form of orange juice. You could give it in many forms. But it doesn't matter what the poisoning, vitamin C will turn off the poison. The thing is, how much do you need? And this is the tricky bit. The doctors are taught that one gram of vitamin C is all you can tolerate. To take more than that, you pee it out. But this is totally, totally untrue. The first time I saw vitamin C used in seriousness was the advice of Linus Pauling about 30 odd years ago. My friend had cancer for the second time and was told they've got 12 weeks left to live. We phoned up Linus Pauling and we found in the phone book that Linus Pauling says, take 35 grams of vitamin C every day in divided doses. He took 35 grams every day in divided doses and he lived another 20 years. And when he did die, it wasn't from cancer. Now, for some people, they might need way more than 35 grams a day. The more ill you are, the, higher, the greater the viral or bacterial load you're running, the more you're gonna need vitamin C. Now there are some people with cancer who've needed 200 grams intravenously in a 24 hour period. Some have needed even more than that. So how can you work this out? Well, let me, let me explain very briefly. Most people can take a couple of grams that's maybe half a, half a level teaspoonful in water, pure, pure vitamin C, no problem. The body's self-regulating. You take too much vitamin C, too much magnesium at once, and you'll get diarrhea. That's the body's self-regulating method. But if with both magnesium and vitamin C you take little and often, then you can take mega doses spread out throughout the day. 
So on a day where you're not going anywhere, you've got nothing to do and you're near a bathroom, <laughs> try taking a couple of grams of vitamin C every 15 minutes or so. I told a couple this the other day, the guy gets to 25 grams, reaches diarrhea. So normally, you know, for most people, five grams or 10 grams, if you're, if you're healthy, five grams is gonna give you diarrhea. But for him, he wasn't healthy. He, had a, he, he, didn't, he didn't feel great, but he wasn't obviously ill. There was no obvious virus or anything. So 25 grams gets diarrhea. That means the following day, he should cut back. Again, spread out and divide the dose of it. Maybe take somewhere between 15 and 20, so he doesn't reach that overdose level. His wife, on the other hand, got to 85 grams and ran out of daytime. And she still hadn't got to diarrhea, so her viral or bacterial load was really quite serious, much more serious than his. So, probably, <coughs> let's, say she, let's say she got to 100 grams. Well, then maybe for, for, for the next couple of weeks, she'd cut down to, say, 75 grams daily. And then, as the viral load uh, decreased, the diarrhea might come back, she might want to keep cutting it down. But there is no virus that I'm aware of that can survive vitamin C. You know, since the 1940s, they started experimenting, and they started finding that they were reversing smallpox, yellow fever, scarlet fever, the flu, colds. And you know, let's say that I mentioned Ebola at the beginning. What would I do if I thought that I might be in danger of Ebola? Well, I'd be mega dosing on vitamin C, I'd find where my threshold is, mega dose to that, just a little bit below it. I'd be taking colloidal silver, as the last speaker was talking about. And those two together, almost certainly I would be protected against a virus, assuming I'm getting enough uh, sunshine, vitamin D, and assuming I've got enough zinc. Did you want to ask a question? Yeah, the um, magnesium citrate, well, that's like kind of the most common one I've seen, so why would that work? Yeah, magnesium, magnesium citrate is absolutely fine. It's very bioavailable and you can take it you know, as a capsule or a tablet, and it, it's fantastic. But on the bottles of magnesium, it's generally accepted that you need 400 milligrams of magnesium as an effective dose. But actually, I'm finding it's not an effective dose. That's why while I tested everybody, everybody was low even if they were supplementing. Some people need way more than that. Some people may even need up to two grams, you know, six or so times as much. And the only way to, to do it is to test yourself. <coughs> Let's say you're anxious, you're worried, you get panic attacks. Just you know, split it up over the day, take more and more magnesium, and see if you calm right down. You know, I, I had somebody just a couple of days ago who had been anxious all their lives, and when they got the dose of the magnesium right, which took one day, their anxiety ended. You know, they, they told me that they are no longer anxious. It just ended just like that. I'm not saying it's gonna work for, for everybody, but it's, magnesium is the number one mineral. You know, minerals are interesting because you, you can set fire to a plant and chlorophyll, the center of chlorophyll is magnesium. You know, chlorophyll is just like our blood. The cent center of our blood is iron. The center of a plant's blood, the chlorophyll, is magnesium. So you can set fire to the plant and all the magnesium will still be there. You know, minerals are pretty much unaffected by heat. But the vitamins are going to start deteriorating from the moment you pick that fruit or vegetable because you know, you've essentially killed it, and it's dying from that point on. So by the time it's been shipped to you, sat around in the warehouse, gone to the supermarket or wherever it is, sat around in your fruit bowl for a, for a few days, how much vitamin C is left? Well, it's, it could be almost nothing, which, which is part of the reason, which explains why people are ill now, and they didn't used to be. Now, 150 years ago, our ancestors weren't ill like they are now. Yes, they died in childbirth, but assuming you, you survived the childbirth pro, pro, process, most people lived as long or longer than they do now. You know, governments, by the way, lied. They said, oh, we used to only live till 45, and now we're living older. But what they did is they combined the statistics of child death with people who live long. They say maybe they lived to 90, and they cut it in half, said, well, 45 was average lifespan, just to try and fool you that modern medicine is a good thing. You know, but one thing you might be interested to know about, do you know, of the five years that a medical doctor studies medicine, how long they spend studying nutrition. I mean, I, I contend we are what we eat, right? We are what we put, in, put the right fuel in the tank, we're going to be well, put the wrong fuel in the tank, we're going to be ill. So each year, doctors on average spend approximately 50 minutes per year, 50 minutes per year on health. That's proteins, carbohydrates, amino acids, essential fats, vitamins, minerals, water, you know, all the food groups, 
So they call themselves health experts. It's a health service or something like that, but it's not. It's clearly disease management. And we make a big mistake. We lose our health and we go to a doctor. It's like having a plumbing problem and going to the fishmonger. You know, that they know nothing about health. And so also there's the psychological aspect that if you get ill and you start looking, you know, let's say somebody finds a lump. They go, oh my God, I got a lump. I'm, I'm, I think it might be cancer. And they go to a doctor looking for cancer. Now, psychologically, this, this is, from a hypnotic basis, really dangerous. Because suddenly the, the subconscious thinks, wow, this, this person is thinking about this cancer thing all the time. You know, they're obsessed by it. They haven't been this interested in the subject for ages. They must want it, because they're thinking about it all the time. Let's give it to them. Then, then the subconscious, oh, now, now we're going for a CAT scan, a CT scan. 600 times more powerful than chest x-ray. You know, doctors say, oh, well, I think you should have a CT scan. And people say, oh, all right then, 600 x-rays all at once? They don't tell you that. You know, doctors don't tell you anything. So many of my clients, you know, I see patients, clients for a living, and so many of them say, oh, well, you know, I had my prostate removed. And I said, did the doctors tell you that you probably wouldn't be able to get an erection after that? Oh, no, they never mentioned that. You know, we are making massive mistakes. I mean, one of, one of the big mistakes is the vaccinations. You know, there is no doubt in my mind, because I see it all the time, that parents come to me and say, I had my child vaccinated, and within a few hours, 24 hours, 48 hours, two weeks, the child was autistic or damaged or whatever. And it's the heavy metal poisoning primarily. Some people say, well, my child got autism, and I didn't vaccinate it. Well, that was probably because mum was already so poisoned, overloaded with toxic metals that she just passed it that way. So can you reverse autism? Yes, you can in many cases. And it's important to understand, well, if you want to know about reversing autism, there's a fabulous conference called Autism One where the experts in this field explain it. But one of my favorite stories uh, you know, I do a lot of interviews. I interview doctors and surgeons and health experts about all sorts of things. And I was interviewing Kerry Rivera, who wrote the book Reversing the Symptoms Known as Autism, about her son. And in about 2005, I think it was, her son was already eight years old, was nonverbal, just a total disaster. And she decides she knows what to do. She takes him off all grains. So that's, that's no bread, no oats, no corn, no rice, no grains. Takes him off all dairy. This leaves one food that her son will eat, which is French fries. Oh. That's it. So they put, put him on French fries for three weeks. Nice organic oil, nice organic potatoes, nothing but French fries. After three days, he starts talking for the first time in his life, age eight. And what was happening was the dairy and the grains were inflaming his brain to such a degree that he couldn't think three days off the inflammatory foods, wham, he's, and now, you know, many years later, he's not 100% not recovered, but pro probably 80% or something like that. And there are other children who have recovered much, much uh, faster, and there are many uh, examples on YouTube of uh, children asking, what's it like to have autism and Asperger's, saying, well, it was terrible, and I was obsessed, and so on, and now I'm fine. So, but the doctors don't know this. The doctors don't know a cure is conceivable, let alone possible. So what, what I'm, what I'm, you know, my role is to explain these things, uh, and I'll try and go through a few other, other ones, so we'll see if we can, we can fix as many problems that you might have health-wise in the room right now. Now, uh, what I'd like to describe to you is iodine deficiency. Now, Almost everybody, probably 95% of all, all, all the people in, in the US are iodine deficient. So what does iodine deficiency look like? Well, it might, for some people, look like dry skin. If any of you find that you walk into a room and forget why you walked in, or you can't find your car keys, that happens often, probably an iodine deficiency. If you've got thyroid issues, you know, you don't like a tight collar around your neck, that might be a, a, a sign of a thyroid issue. Maybe you're putting on weight and can't get rid of it. Uh, you've got cold hands and feet, for instance, or perhaps men, men, at menopause, women's temperature is all out of control all over the place. Iodine deficiency. So who in the world gets a lot of iodine? Well, the Japanese do, because they're eating seaweed with every meal, pretty much, and loads of fish. So in England, 
Nine out of 10 women at menopause get hot flushes. In Japan, it's one out of 10 because the iodine regulates body temperature. So when I realized about 10 years ago that I was low on iodine, like everybody else, I started taking it and my memory improved incredibly. The most common phrase I hear about iodine supplementation, people say the brain fog just lifted. Suddenly it was like I was when I was sharp and young. And it could happen quite quickly. You know, within a day, a few days, or a few weeks, people can notice a dramatic difference. You know, if you're having cold hands and feet, I had somebody come up to me yesterday who said not only did they wear socks in bed, but they wore gloves in bed as well. That's a severe, severe iodine deficiency. So let's say a woman wants to have a baby. Now, uh, there is a clinical condition where a woman has a child when they're low on iodine, and that's called cretinism. The child is born a cretin, mentally deficient, because iodine is all about IQ. You want your child to have a high IQ, make sure that mum's got <coughs> iodine, and consider either um, supplementing with iodine, and you can actually just paint it on the skin. Most, most people get on very well with just painting it on. You put some drops in water and drink it. The type of iodine that's the one to go for is called Lugol's iodine. And I can show you a bottle. Uh, this, is, this is Lugol's iodine. But this would cost maybe $25 for a bottle like this. And this would last you a year. You know, so it's a couple of dollars a month. It's so cheap and silly. Yeah. Can you spell that name? Uh, L-U-G-O-L-S, Lugol's iodine. Oh, what percent? Well, um, in America, you're, you're not allowed the full strength okay. one. Uh, in America, the maximum strength, I think, is 5%. Uh, this one is highly illegal. It's 12.5%. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so there are, a couple, hang on a there are a couple of things you've got to be careful about with iodine, and you want to start slowly. And like sort of one drop in, in water, see how you feel. I, I've had in, in my life, I've had two clients who've ended up in the emergency room because they painted it on their skin and they got such a bad skin reaction that uh, they had to go to the emergency room. But this is probably two in 20,000 or something. It's, it's very rare to have a skin problem, but always test them on a very small area first. But iodine is, is super important, massively, massively important. You, you had a question? Do you have some available for sale? Uh, no, unfortunately not, but in uh, a month or so, I'm launching my own uh, brand called Live to Carl, and uh, if any of you would, would like to be put down for, for my health pack, what we're doing is we're building uh, a couple of emergency health packs, so no matter what, you're going to be fine. You know, so, I mean, let, let's run through what can happen. Um, the two things that kill us at the end of the day are related to an, I, an osis or an itis. In other words, uh, an osis like fibrosis, muscular, uh, multiple sclerosis, liver cirrhosis, that these are where scar tissue builds up in the body. Uh, anything with an osis, scar tissue builds up. And at the end, scar tissue works a tenth as well as regular uh, tissue. So let's say you've had an operation, now you've got scar tissue. Let's say the body can't repair itself, you haven't got enough zinc or whatever it might be to make healthy cells, the body will use scar tissue to repair. So at the end of life, a lot of us um, die from, from scar tissue, effectively. Now you can dissolve scar tissue, it's quite easy. On the other hand, the rest of us are, uh, are going to die from inflammatory disease, it may, may lead to heart disease or, or whatever it is, and that's easy as well. So what are, what are the basic answers? Well, they're all going to be in the health pack. The basic answers for fibrosis, scar tissue, is high quality sulfur. Why do people like ginger and garlic and uh, sprouts of cruciferous vegetables like broccoli? Why are these considered healthy foods? They're full of sulfur. Eggs are full of sulfur as well. And uh, so sulfur literally dissolves scar tissue if it's high quality stuff. Very important. There are also enzymes that do the same, like serapentase. But from the position of inflammation, what are you going to do there? Well, there are some fabulous uh, herbs and spices out there. Turmeric, fantastic for reducing inflammation. Garlic, again, fantastic for inflammation. And um, so in the health pack will be things like uh, vitamin C, vitamin D, colloidal silver, magnesium, um, uh, charcoal. 
these sort of things. So if any of you want to be, uh, are interested in, in the future of buying one of these emergency packs or just a general health pack, if you see my assistant L, who's at the back uh, on, on, the, uh, on my desk at the moment, she's just she's been vanished temporarily, but she is there. Uh, she can sign you up and we'll send you details. We'll also give you a dis discount to the pack as well. Is that available like in Canada? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, luckily, shipping from England is incredibly inexpensive, so it costs nothing to throw the shipping in for free. So, along with all, all these supplements, and all of them are inexpensive, you know, it's, it's not like going to the doctor where you've got to sell your house to get well. Most of these supplements are incredibly inexpensive. Let me show you another one, which is um, uh, this one, uh, Fulvic Minerals. The, um, these are minerals from the soil, and you know we've all heard of uh, Roundup, you know, Monsanto's glyphosate poison, which is in pretty much every food or water all over the place. Well, this neutralizes it, and uh, we can take orders for this right now. Uh, this this bottle uh, would cost about forty dollars, and there's enough in here for four months. You know, so it's ten dollars a month or something. It's really really cheap, and an amazing amazing product. Now, um, let me show you one more thing, which is this. This is a Russian device, and it's called a pain genie. Now, I've had one of these for 10 years, and generally speaking, if somebody's in pain, generally speaking, you can get them out of pain in five or 10 minutes with one of these, 80% of people, right out of pain. But it's not just a tempor temporary fix. This, uh, this was developed for, for the Russian cosmonauts. They put over 100 of their top scientists, it was military, so money was no object, to develop this device. They'd watch Star Trek on TV. They knew they wanted a little device like this, it would heal everything. So you can use it for reversing blindness. You can use it for so many things. It's an incredible piece of kit. It costs about $600, and uh, I work with the chap who imports them from Russia, and we can offer a small discount on these. If anybody wants to buy one of these, they are just ludicrously incredible. Every community needs one of these. Is it electric way? I mean, it runs on a little nine volt battery. No, but what is it sending? I mean, you put it like on the area where the yeah, pain it, is. A, no, you don't have to. No, you. you uh, generally speaking, I use it on the arm because, from a Chinese perspective, uh, between each joint represents the whole body. So you can treat the entire body using the arm, or you, you can use it locally, uh, both. Um, so. And you this is this. It's called a pain genie, and um, uh, if you again, if you give your name to to Elle at the back of the back of the room, she can take all your details and so on. Now, I need. To, I've only got a couple more minutes, so uh, you can ask me questions <coughs> afterwards. Um, if you want to learn more about this sort of stuff, I'm putting on a uh, workshop on Sunday, and another one on Monday, and you know, oh yeah. I've got two or three slots left for consultations. I, I'm not at all, in, in, I'm, I'm not inexpensive for consultations, but if you want to come to the workshop, you'll get the same sort of information. Uh, it's $100 to come to the workshop, and it's like this, but more. So at the end of that, you should really, really know how to fix pretty much everything from Alzheimer's to arthritis or whatever it is. Your know, Alzheimer's, again, can be reversed. There's so much that we need to know so that we and our family and our community stay healthy. So I hope you might want to come along to, uh, to one of the workshops. I'll be available uh, uh, afterwards if you've got, got any, any questions. Oh, yes. Yeah, exactly. So if anybody wants to be treated with uh, the pain genie at the workshop, uh, Elle will be helping me uh, treat people while, while we're doing it. Um, also, I'm offering mineral testing. Now, all of us are low on minerals, but how do you know which ones you're low on, and how do you figure it out? Well, um, th th there is th there's testing that, that can be done to figure it out, and it can be life and death. You, know, you, you, you find you're low on magnesium, for instance. Well, by supplementing with magnesium, seriously, without any exaggeration, you can put an extra 10 years on your life because you're not going to die of something dreadful. So I think I, 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 I can take questions afterwards, but I think I need to wind up now. So uh, thank you all very, very much. I hope to see you at the workshop.
Poco is so hype, I'm trying to tell ya This the event of the year And best vacation ever Ryan part of Jeffrey Tucker Just to name a few Get your tickets, you don't want to miss it You should roll through Talking politics to health and self-improvement To investing, so many things, not one thing Learn how to live life unchained, yeah Four days vibing on the beach Time to connect, all about growth Way more than a conference This is Anarchapoco, yeah Let's go you ain't seen nothing yet.